It was Claire Booth Luce who said, courage is the ladder on which all other virtues climb. It is the courage of our CCRP living legacy honorees that has taken them to the hallowed halls of academia and business. It is their courage to keep pushing even when support gets thin. It is their persistence in ignoring the naysayers and facing life's challenges head on that make their stories worth telling and their values worth emulating. I was happy to found CCRP 11 years ago as a legacy project for my company, Procom, on our 30th anniversary. And we decided to start it in gratitude to our seniors who guided our company's success, not least among them my mother of blessed memory. Now, CCRP, with 11,000 members, continues on our mission of empowerment, advocacy, and care for Jamaica's senior community, led by our fantastic board. I'd like to take the opportunity to quickly recognize them by asking them to stand. Mrs. Patricia Reed Wall, way over there. Mr. Seth Raman Kumar, there he is. And Mr. Warren McDonald, there is Mr. McDonald. <clears throat> Our other dedicated board directors who are joining us virtually are Mrs. McDonald, who I mentioned before, Director Emerita, Ambassador Alun Asambo, Mr. Michael Fraser, Dr. Owen James, Mr. Dennis Jones, and Mr. Peter Mays. Outside of Kingston, we have three chapters. Western Jamaica, convened by Dr. Norma Taylor and served by Dr. Erica Da Silva and Dr. Doreen Bernard. Central Jamaica, convened by Mrs. Patricia Blackwood. Northeast Jamaica, convened by Mr. Pixley Irons and served by Ms. Doreen Plummer. And our head office team, some of them could not be here because our phones are so busy. So thank you, Pansy Roper and Noel Chin. And of course, thank you to the other team members who have been here assisting us in organizing this event. We continue to work in concert with the National Council for Senior Citizens for the creation of an Elderly Care and Protection Act. We have met with legal representatives at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security we have met with and written to Minister Honorable Carl Samuda, and we have provided similar legislation from three Commonwealth countries. Our thanks to our legal committee member, Mrs. Gloria Langren, for her brilliant research. We are grateful to Gallagher Insurance Brokers for designing our life-saving CCRP health plan and SAGICOR for underwriting it. Imagine over the past year, Sajikor paid out over $1.2 billion in claims for our members. And so we know they are benefiting from this plan. So I thank you, Mr. Pawson and Ms. Thomas, who are here with us. We thank JNGI, not only for their fantastic Silver Shield auto and property insurance tailored for our members, but also for their sponsorship of our weekly radio program, CCRP Update. Thank you, Mr. Hind, who is here with us. CCRP engages in continual outreach to our membership through monthly lifestyle activities. We have had presentations from some of today's sponsors, NCB, BPM Financial, Gallagher, JNGI, and Scotiabank. And thank you so much, representatives, for being here with us. We encourage fellowship among our members. And even with COVID restrictions, we have been able to lift the spirits of our membership. We are deeply grateful to National Baking Company, the star sponsor of CCRP Living Legacy Awards. They have supported us year after year. Thank you so much, Butch Hendrickson. Your legendary father, Honorable Carl Hendrickson, was one of the first recipients of this Living Legacy Award. Thank you. 
And thank you, Tiffany. We are looking forward to our Christmas concert. It's virtual on December the 8th. We have been having some beautiful concerts. We have partnered with Food for the Poor and the Community Relations Division of the Jamaica Constabulary Force contributing $1 million over the past two years to distribute care packages to needy elderly persons. Thank you, DSP Palmer Mayor, for organizing distribution by your compassionate officers through the length and breadth of Jamaica. <laughs> this has been a trying time for our members, and we thank Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie for her serene and calm advice that she has been giving our members, the wider Jamaica, but I can tell you, Dr. Bisesa McKenzie, our members appreciate you greatly. <laughs> In closing, I say to our distinguished living legacy honorees, Professor Hewitt, Mrs. Hinchcliffe, Professor Figaro and Mr. Leo Ayi, Jamaica may be facing some tough times, but your DNA of excellence, courage, and integrity is infused in our nation and gives us hope. On behalf of the board and management of CCRP, we extend our heartiest congratulations to you. We express deep gratitude to our sponsors we hope that this ceremony will gladden your hearts as we reflect on your immeasurable contribution to the building and protection of Jamaica, land we love. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Thank you very much, Mrs. Laurie Chin. At this time, we move straight away into the first of two special awards of appreciation to Dr. Jacqueline Biseso McKenzie. Dr. Jacqueline Biseso McKenzie, Jamaica's Chief Medical Officer, has distinguished herself in the post during the COVID-19 pandemic. While the pandemic has been the supreme disruptive force in national life for the past 20 months, Mrs. Biseso McKenzie has been a picture of calm authority and composure throughout, giving a sense of assurance to Jamaicans in the midst of the health crisis. For this, and for her untiring work to protect our people from this disease, we express our deep gratitude and present her with a very special award of appreciation. Dr. Biseso McKenzie, would you please come up to receive your award? It will be presented by CCRP Board Director, Mrs. Patricia Reed Waugh, and Mrs. Maureen Thomas from Gallagher Insurance Brokers will present the gift afterwards. Please come up. Okay. Award of Appreciation presented to Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie in recognition of your outstanding service to the nation as Chief Medical Officer during the COVID-19 pandemic, 25th November, 2021. Ms. Thomas from Gallagher will present the gift. Thank you very much. Our next special award of appreciation is to Deputy Superintendent of Police, Natalie Palmer Mayor, Staff Officer of, to the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Community Safety and Security Branch. With a heart for her fellow Jamaicans, DSP Palmer Mayor has risen through the ranks of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, earning the respect of her JCF colleagues and of the general public along the way. In 2020 and this year, when CCRP needed assistance to donate care packages to the needy seniors, 
DSP Palmer Mayor was quick to agree to organize with the Police Community Relations Division to effect the island-wide distribution. The officers showed tremendous compassion in their interactions with our seniors. We thank them and DSP Palmer Mayor for their good work and we take great pleasure now in presenting this award of appreciation to DSP Natalie Palmer Mayor. Will be presented of your outstanding service, yes. the welfare of the Mr. Chris Hind from JNGI will present the gift to DSP Palmer Mayor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special treat. His father, John Williams, is a proven maestro in all genres of music. And this young man has certainly taken up the mantle. Please help me welcome on violin, Giovanni Williams, please. Thank you. 
Oh, greedy me, I wanted more. <laughs> Thank you very much, Giovanni. I saw feet tapping and head shaking, and we're celebrating as much as we can all things Jamaican, all things. Please put your hands together for him. A young man <laughs> doing so very well, a legacy with his dad right at his side as well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present the Living Legacy Award 2021, beginning with the Syringa Marshall Burnett Award for Health, named for the late former educator, president of the Nurses Association of Jamaica, and president of the Senate. This award will be presented to Professor Hermie Hewitt, please. <laughs> Professor Hewitt, please come and sit in your chair while Mr. Sidney Laurie will read a citation. In the annals of Jamaica's public health system, there are many heroic figures who, without fanfare or the quest for accolades, have had a transformative impact that resonates to the present day. One such unsung heroine in healthcare is Professor Hermie Hewitt, whose humble demeanor belies the magnitude of her accomplishments. As practitioner, educator, and historian of her chosen profession, Professor Hewitt 
is an internationally recognized paragon of the nursing profession. Professor Hewitt received her nursing and midwifery education at the University Hospital of the West Indies, then her BSc in nursing education at the University of the West Indies. She later gained her master's degree in public health at Tulane University in New Orleans and her PhD at the University of Iowa. She also did, she also did continuing studies at Harvard University and the University of Miami. Professor Hewitt served as head of nursing education at Excelsior Community College, head and director of UWI School of Nursing, Mona, and associate dean and professor at the Caribbean School of Nursing, University of Technology, Jamaica. At UWI and UTEC, she had the responsibility for leading academic scholarship, initiating new undergraduate and doctorate degrees, graduate degrees up to the doctoral level, and developing faculty research capacity through international linkages. The linkages included a partnership with the University of Ottawa Research Internship Program and program enhancement by Duke University and Ryerson University. At the UWI School of Nursing, Professor Hewitt also expanded the physical facility for nursing education and led the designation of the school as a PAHO WHO WHO collaborating center for nursing and midwifery development in the Caribbean. She also steered the institution through testing times when significant numbers of nurses and nursing graduates were leaving to take up opportunities overseas. Professor Hewitt was a principal investigator in Jamaica responsible for the overall scientific integrity of the mother and daughter HIV risk reduction project a U.S. $1.96 million joint research project from the U.S. National Institutes of Health, the NIH, and the National Institute of Nursing Research, NINR, connect, conducted in collaboration with New York University and the University of Pennsylvania. In 2003, Professor Hewitt was awarded the Order of Distinction Officer Class for her service to nursing education. Further afield, she was inducted into the American Academy of Nursing as one of the Academy's new fellows for 2009 during the Academy's annual award ceremony and induction banquet in Atlanta, Georgia. She was the first non-American nurse to be so honored. She was also, and to date, the only nurse in Jamaica to be awarded the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship, a non-degree graduate program offered internationally to professionals for study in the USA. She was the recipient of the Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence in 2008 for all round performance in teaching and service to the UWI community. Professor Hewitt's areas of research include the use of Kyrica papaya in chronic skin ulcer care, HIV risk reduction in Jamaican adolescents, health workers' views of deinstitutionalized psychiatric care, 
and quality of life for persons with asthma. Her publications include the book Trailblazers in Nursing Education, a Caribbean Perspective, considered regionally and internationally as the reference standard on Caribbean nursing history, as well as book chapters and several scholarly articles in peer-reviewed journals. CCRP is greatly pleased to present the Syringa Marshall Burnett CCRP Living Legacy Award for Health to Professor Hermie Hewitt in recognition of her outstanding service to nursing education in Jamaica. Thank you, Sydney. We will now have the presentation of award and gift. Our board director, Mr. Warren McDonald, will make the presentation. Mr. McDonald and Misha Ray coming up. Thank you. And now, Mrs. Misha Ray, Program Manager and client ex of Client Experience at the National Commercial Bank. She will make the presentation of a gift. Wonderful. Professor Hewitt, we now wait your reply, please. Master of Ceremonies, Miss Joan MacDonald, other very distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the audience everywhere, I must first give tribute to Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin, founder and executive chair of the CCRP, Without her vision and resolve to start this August community, this event would not be taking place. I deem it a great honor to be invited as an honoree at this function. It is especially so as I am numbered among some eminent awardees who are known to me personally and professionally as worthy recipients of this recognition. Madam Chair, very few persons in their lifetime have been honored for work accomplished, especially service that is done to or for others. I stand here acknowledging that I'm truly blessed for having several times in my life having my nursing and midwifery colleagues propose me to be honored in an extraordinary way. The last memorable occasion was in 2009 when I was inducted as a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, among the first nurses living outside of the United States to be so honored. As memorable as this occasion was, I consider this occasion the highest honor as the nurse who nominated me for this award is a distinguished nurse who occupied the highest nursing position in Jamaica, one who I, have, one who I know have observed my work and with whom I have worked collaboratively. And this is Mrs. Merrill Hansen. I'm happy that she's here with us this afternoon. I accept the CCRP prestigious award with gratitude and humility. I accept the CCRP award on behalf of all of those who contributed to my growth and development in nursing and midwifery over the 57 years. It would be remiss of me not to mention some such outstanding nurses. 
beginning with my early training in 1964. Mrs. Enid Lawrence, Miss Cicelyn Lambert, Mrs. Laurice Hunter Scott, Dr. Mary Jane Sivright, and Mrs. Syringa Marshall Burnett. They are all deceased, but I was especially blessed to have received the baton for leadership of nursing at the UWI in 2002, personally from Mrs. Syringa Marshall Burnett, who was one of my teachers, and have worked with her until my retirement in 2010. I give thanks to Almighty God for the privileges that he has afforded me to serve and to be so honored. Thanks to you, Mrs. Laurie Chin and the CCPRC team for this prestigious award. Finally, I accept the award on behalf of my husband of 54 years and my entire, and my entire family that have been my support in all that I have accomplished. Thank you. Oh. oh, so wonderful. Thank you so very much, Professor Hewitt and Mr. Hewitt. Congratulations to you both. Yes? We will now present the J. Lester Spaulding CCRP Living Legacy Award for Business. The late J. Lester Spaulding was chairman of the RGR Gleaner Group of Companies and was also a foundation board director of CCRP, sharing his wisdom and experience to get us on sound footing. This award will be presented to Mrs. Audrey Stewart Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe. The citation will be read by Mrs. Reed Wall. Bold, witty, and resolute in her ambitions, Audrey Stewart Hinchcliffe has built a successful and admired Jamaican enterprise based on values of good old-fashioned manners and the notion that nothing creates success like building relationships human to human. She was born into a large family, the youngest of nine children, in the heart of Yellow Yam country in Larmers, Trelawney, near the juncture of Trelawney, St. Anne, Manchester, and Clarendon. Parents Arthur and Ethelyn inspired her from an early age to believe that she had the ability to excel and succeed. It is in St. Anne that her educational journey began at the Bohemia Elementary School, now Bohemia All Age School. Mrs. Hinchcliffe then attended Excelsior High School and the Fitzhenley Commercial School. But before long, she chose to follow her dream of becoming a nurse. After graduating from the University College Hospital, she worked briefly as a staff nurse at the Nuttall Hospital and also briefly studied midwifery at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital before an illness forced her to abandon that field of study. Returning to the University Hospital, Hinchcliffe worked as a staff nurse before entering the occupational health field at the then Sugar Industry Welfare Board which operated health centers in 13 sugar estates across the island. However, what she describes as the restless bug soon bit her, and she departed for New York, where she attended St. Francis College, gaining an undergraduate degree in community health management. The BA was soon followed by a master's degree in health administration from Long Island University. Thus academically armed, she became sought after by several health facilities and soon accepted a position as director of nursing at the University Hospital of Jacksonville, Florida. 
On a visit home from, for independence celebrations in 1981, she fell ill and returned to Florida, narrowly avoiding being stranded by the infamous U.S. air traffic controllers strike of that year. Upon arrival, she went directly to Jacksonville Hospital, where she was immediately admitted and wheeled directly to operating theater for life-saving surgery. Six weeks later, she returned to her director of nursing post and continued the work of restoring the official accreditation of the institution. From her successful career in, health, in the health profession in the US, an advertisement by the Caribbean Community Secretariat in Guyana for the newly created position of health development officer caught her eye. After resolving some issues with her previous employer, she accepted the position, serving the 17-member CARICOM for six years before returning to Jamaica to begin her entrepreneurial journey. Overcoming some wrangling concerning her diplomatic status and some personal challenges, not having a home of her own, and facing, for various reasons, rejection at every turn in which she sought employment, Audrey Hinchcliffe took the only logical remaining path and in 1987, Caribbean Health Management Consultants was born. Her first contract came from the Tony Thwaites Wing at the University Hospital. From there, she won a bid to offer services at the Spanish Town Hospital and the former Life of Jamaica, now Sajikor Building. She soon realized that the company in its initial form and model would not generate sufficient returns to be sustainable. Those early hard-won contracts gave rise to the formation in 1990 of the new business entity, the one we know today as Manpower and Maintenance Services Limited. In 2006, Hinchcliffe received the Order of Distinction, Commander Class, in recognition of her entrepreneurial enterprise and leadership in employee relationships. International honor would follow in 2011, when she was invited by then U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to serve a two-year term as a member of the newly established International Council on Women's Business Leadership to offer advice to the State Department on the formulation of strategies and policies to empower women for global economic prosperity. Audrey Hinchcliffe is the author of The Will to Overcome, a combined business and personal memoir and a compendium of speeches made by her over the last three decades and published to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Manpower and Maintenance Services Limited. In 1988, Hinchcliffe published Taking Care, a Manual for Medical Office Administrators. CCRP is delighted to honor Mrs. Audrey Stewart Hinchcliffe with the J. Lester Spaulding CCRP Living Legacy Award for Business in recognition of her trailblazing health entrepreneurship and lifelong dedication to excellence in the service sector. Thank you very much, Mrs. Reed Wall. We will now have the presentation of the award and gift. And now, the citation and gift by Mrs. Grace McLean, Financial Advisor, BPM Financial. Mrs. 
Mrs. Stuart Inchcliffe, please give your reply. Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin, I'm very obedient. All protocols observed. Fellow awardees, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me first say what a singular honor it is to be recognized in this fashion by the Caribbean Community of Retired Person, the CCRP, although I must confess that I have yet to give serious thought to the concept of retirement. <laughs> I'm taking a cue from the mogul Warren Buffett at the age of 91 and his partner Charlie Munger at 97. I'm still quite young at the age 82. <laughs> if the pandemic has done nothing else, it has reinforced for me the importance of being healthy, active, staying connected, and contributing to public discourse as we address the issues and confront the challenges of our time, even if one is doing it from home. The truth is, I have never been busier leading a business, writing, gardening, and baking, I haven't poisoned anybody yet. <laughs> I, this life could never have been predicted. When I returned to Jamaica, after living and working overseas for a little over 24 years, I had to make a living and I wanted to contribute to the economic and social life of this country. How to achieve this was the big question. Originally, as you heard, a country girl from the Yam Belt in the parish of Trelawney, I knew I wanted to make a positive impact, mainly among those who found it a little more challenging to find a place in the workplace. The first order of business, therefore, was for me to find gainful employment, so I began the search for a job. To my dismay, nothing was forthcoming. You don't think you're overqualified. What came instead was the opportunity to start a business, and as you heard it, Caribbean Health Management Consultants Limited was formed and is still very active today, providing occupational health service to a number of companies. Then came Manpower and Maintenance Services Limited, and as you hear, the rest is history. Manpower was founded almost 32 years ago with the assistance of family and the encouragement of friends. It has survived on the sterling contribution of staff and clients who have supported the business over the years. We are very grateful that the company has not only survived but thrived. Procom is one of my clients. <laughs> Today, in addition to our headquarters in Kingston, we are in Mandeville and Montego Bay. And of course, we offer over 18 different services. Along the way, we have also sought to play a role in public education in the areas of public health with seminars, writing policies and protocols, and other initiatives to address the current challenge of COVID or the coronavirus, I should say, and in the past, dealing with other diseases such as dengue, chick V, and Zika virus. While we are grateful for our achievements, we are also acutely aware of the sacrifices that place us in the position of honor today. I am sure that each of my fellow awardees Professor Hermie Hewitt, both of us have groundings at Bohemia Elementary School in St. Anne. And she followed after me in nursing. And as you hear, the rest is history. Professor Peter Figaro, Mr. Paris Louis, Sr., Dr. Jacqueline Bissessa McKenzie, as well as DSP Natalie Palmer Mayor, we can all attest to the long hours sleep deprivation, 
great personal and other sacrifices that have resulted in them being here today. Congratulations to all. I can certainly say that while the road has been long and sometimes even treacherous, the journey continues to be rewarding. Thank you, CCRP, for recognizing effort, service, sacrifice, and for numbering me among the distinguished awardees who have been singled out to be here today to be honored. That I'm in the company of these outstanding Jamaicans who have contributed so much to this country, I am, it is indeed humbling. Thanks to those who have encouraged and held my hand in the beginning and those who have continued to hold my hand today. Special thanks to the members of my family, my son Garth Hinskip is here, who have believed in my dream and helped to make it real. I also sincerely thank my staff and clients, both past and present, without whom I most certainly would not be here today. In accepting this award, award I also remember and recognize my friend, J.A. Lester Spaulding, the outstanding Jamaican for whom this award I am receiving is named. Truly, truly thankful. I truly hope that this Living Legacy Award for Business will inspire others, regardless of age and stage. Like I said in my book, The Will to Overcome, Reflections on Circumstance, Vision and Service. Entrepreneurship is a journey with its processes. Sometimes when fortune smiles on us, that journey leads us here. Again, thank you, CCRP, and may your organization continue to grow and flourish as you continue to serve the retired community. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Stuart Hinchcliffe, and congratulations. Our next presentation is to Professor the Honorable Peter Figueroa. Professor Figueroa, please come forward as you are. Oh, he's ready already. Mr. Sidney Laurie will read the citation. Throughout his 40-year career in public health, Professor Peter Figueroa has consistently advocated a collaborative, rational, yet compassionate approach to meeting public health challenges. Serving as an example, like many of our health sector workers, of someone who commits their life to trying to help others. Professor Figueroa, joined the health service after gaining his medical degree and, as a young doctor, organized his colleagues in the government service to form the Junior Doctors Association, the JDA, in 1975, renamed the Medical Doctors Association in 2002. As president of the JDA, Professor Figueroa led the charge for improved working conditions for doctors so as to improve health service delivery. He was also a founding member of the Caribbean Public Health Association and the Caribbean College of Family Practitioners. In 1986, he earned a United Nations Peace Medal for his service as Vice Chair of the National Committee for the Commemoration of the International Year of Peace. In 2019, at the World Health Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland, he was recognized as a world health leader by the WHO. <laughs> Professor Figueroa, was one of the few clinicians who was willing to provide medical care to HIV patients at the height of the HIV AIDS and epidemic. 
and he led the response to HIV for many years, including the development of a national surveillance system. Professor Figueroa mobilized funding, established condom usage as a norm nationally, and established the public access antiretroviral treatment program. He also expanded STI services, leading outreach for HIV testing and prevention. As a central figure in HIV treatment in Jamaica, Professor Figueroa has been a member of the UNAIDS Scientific Expert Panel since 2014. He still provides medical care for scores of people living with HIV at his medical practice. Professor Figueroa's roles over the years have included Principal Medical Officer, Epidemiology in the Ministry of Health, Chief Medical Officer, Director of the National HIV STI Program, Scientific Secretary and Chair of the Caribbean Health Research Council, and Temporary Advisor to the World Health Organization on a range of public health topics. He has provided technical advice to many Caribbean countries and to the CARICOM Council on Human and Social Development on a variety of public health issues since the 1980s. He served on the Scientific Advisory Council of the Caribbean Epidemiology Center and since 1989 has been the chair of the Caribbean Immunization Managers Annual Meeting and the Caribbean Certification Committee for the Eradication of Poliovirus. Professor Figueroa is chair of the Technical Advisory Group for Immunizations convened by the Pan American Health Organization. He has also been a consistent advocate for vaccination, including against the ever prevalent flu virus, as well as against COVID-19, and is a member of the WHO Working Group on COVID-19 Vaccines. Professor Figueroa was awarded a PhD in 1996 by the School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, University of London, and has since written or co-authored more than 150 published papers and co-edited three books on a range of public health topics. As Professor of Public Health, Epidemiology, and HIV AIDS at the UWI Mona, he has led the development of a Doctor of Public Health DRPH program. His voluminous contribution to public health has been guided by a simple yet profound mantra. Health is more than health. It is having a just society. It is having the social conditions in place where persons, especially the most vulnerable, are not left behind. CCRP takes great pleasure in presenting Professor Peter Figueroa with this, our 2021 Living Legacy Award in recognition of his invaluable contribution to public health and dedication to the prevention of infectious diseases. Thank you very much, Sydney. CCRP as he stands. Wow, he's always a toops ahead of me. I like that. <laughs> Mr. Saturaman Kumaraswamy, or CCRP Board Director, will make the presentation of the award. Yes. 
James Pawson, Chairman of Gallagher Insurance Brokers Jamaica, will present the citation and the gift. Thank you very much, Professor Figueroa. Can you please let us have your reply? Yeah. Good evening, everyone, honorees, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I really do have to thank the CCRP for this tribute and award. I really do appreciate it. I want to thank my friend Sydney. Where is he? <laughs> for that wonderful citation. And I've known Sidney for many years, but I've not seen him recently. So he does have an insight into me that many others may not have. And he has not really revealed everything, <laughs> some of which I thank him for. <laughs> but really, all that I have contributed to has not been possible from me alone. What I have done, much of it, is with people, through people, and for people. Most of us cannot achieve what Sidney spoke about without others playing a critical role. Your team of colleagues, everyone who you work with, your friends, your family. So I want to, in accepting this tribute and award, to thank all of those who have contributed to my birth and formation, my parents, my family, and especially my wife and my three children, <laughs> As other awardees have said, persons being awarded here tend to work hard, long hours, um, and part of it is because we enjoy what we do, but we cannot do it without the support of our families, our friends, and our colleagues. My wife in particular is someone who will speak truth to me in a way that many others will not, and I appreciate this. She knows my strengths and weaknesses, so she helps me to dress properly when she can manage to do so, <laughs> and other such important tasks that we have to do in daily life. But I want to also spend a special tribute to all the colleagues that I've worked with and all the persons at the Ministry of Health, and I mean all. I used to learn from my driver when he was taking me to the airport. Every person who I've worked with, I've always seeked to engage with them in a way where they can enlighten and improve my understanding of what is going on and get some feedback about how we need to improve and do better. One of the things I liked best was coming out of the office when I was chief medical officer or national epidemiologist, going into the field. And of course, the first thing you're greeted with after the whatever, however they greet you, is with a serious criticism about what you're not doing properly or what's wrong with the ministry. Of course, I agree with them completely, right up front, in order to hear and get a perspective on what we need to do better. And then, of course, I would try and explain, if I had an explanation, but always seek to improve what we do. So I'd like to thank all my colleagues and friends who I've worked with over the years. But I've enjoyed my work. 
And that is my advice, that people should choose things to do that they really enjoy, but always express a good degree of frustration and challenge. And it's up for us with our friends and colleagues to overcome those challenges. So I think I've thanked, there's another set of persons I'd like to thank too, because in our house, we've always had a helper to help us with things around the house. We've had some very gifted helpers, and I can tell you that they also have helped both myself and my wife to contribute more. And I want to recognize them. So I think I've thanked everyone. This evening I have learned about the tremendous work that CCRP is doing. And as I listened and reflected, I'm actually going to note the vision and mission to work towards ensuring that the vast talent, experience, and wisdom of seniors will be respected. I agree with that. To ensure that our seniors will enjoy the quality of life they deserve, absolutely, for everyone. Empowerment of our seniors to continue making their contribution to the development of the community, country, and region. This is absolutely important. The resource of expertise, knowledge, experience that our seniors have. We must call on it. And as my young friend who was just honored said, she's still young at 82. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't agree with her more. Of course, I'm younger than her. Um, but I'd like to suggest to this wonderful organization that you need to call on our seniors also to play a special role in empowering our younger generations who are coming after us so that we can really empower them, support them, and let them blossom and fulfill their potential. Too often, persons with great potential, whether young or old, are not called on to take responsibility and do what they can do to make a difference. We should always be seeking to empower others because it is in the interest of all. I thank you. Thank you, Professor Figueroa, and congratulations. We will now make the presentation to Mr. Paris Leo Ayi, Sr. Please come and be seated while the citation is read by Mrs. Patricia Reed Wall. Throughout history, the time honored values of hard work, devotion to duty, and family, as well as service above self have helped to propel many to greatness, even from the humblest beginnings. Paris Liao Ayi was one of five children born to a father employed to the then Public Works Department for St. Thomas and Portland, and a mother who ran the small family shop to supplement their income. But humble as his beginnings were, he determined that they would not limit him in the quest to honor those values instilled in him through fulfilling his obligations to his family. Time spent with his father on the torturous mountain roads of Portland and St. Thomas gave him a love of nature and awakened his curiosity about the natural environment. He first attended Trenchtown Primary School, then moved to the Chinese Public School in Kingston before transferring to Trinityville Primary in St. Thomas. Through a Jamaica government scholarship, he entered Excelsior High School, where he was introduced to the field of geology by then geography geology teacher, 
Mr. Lindo Wong, later headmaster. Yet another Jamaica scholarship saw him through to the University of the West Indies, Mona, from which he graduated in 1971 with a BSc Special Honors in Geology. He was again awarded a scholarship to further his studies at the Pennsylvania State University in the US. There he distinguished himself with his master's thesis, an application of mathematical programming and system stimulation to bauxite mining in Jamaica, which was subsequently widely used in North American mining programs. That keen sensitivity to the importance of understanding Jamaica's mineral resources, particularly bauxite, led Paris Leo Ayi to the Ministry of Mining, where he would play an important role in the landmark bauxite levy negotiations. In 1975, he joined the newly established Jamaica Bauxite Institute as Director of Bauxite Reserves and Lands. In that capacity, he led detailed studies and compilations of the genesis, quantum, and nature of Jamaica's bauxite reserves and the allocation of the bauxite reserves to the bauxite companies operating in Jamaica. At the JBI, he led several investigations and research programs for increased efficiencies in using processing Jamaican bauxites, which included the best means of managing the red mud materials, and eventually to the extraction of rare earth elements. He retired from the JBI in 2018 as its executive director. On joining the board of directors of the Caribbean Cement Company in 1991, he initiated research which saw the use of formerly waste materials, anhydrides, shales, and volcanic rocks to be used in the manufacturing process of cement rather than importing equivalent materials. He continues on that board as its chairman since 2017. Over the period 1974 to 2008, he served as president or vice president of the Geological Society of Jamaica for a total of 10 years where he initiated and faithfully saw through the completion saw through to completion the uh, obelisk which represents the stratigraphic column of the oldest to the youngest rocks in Jamaica which stands in front of the geography and geology department at UWI Mono. The staging of over 10 international bauxite conferences and saw the provision of scholarships for promising young geologists. His contributions extend beyond bauxite. In 1983, he began a 15-year tenure as chairman of the board of directors of the Underground Water Authority, where he was a leading voice for the establishment of the present Water Resources Authority, where he was the first chairman. He also led the move to establish a new chair in hydrogeology, water resources management in the Department of Ge Geography and Geology at the UWI Mono, with support from Illumina Partners, Kaiser Bauxite, Jamalco, and the Alcor Foundation. Also, while serving as chairman of the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica in 2010, he was instrumental in reviving the program to actively pursue the exploration for oil and gas in Jamaican waters, as the prospects are still good. Paris Leo Ali was awarded the Order of Distinction Commander Class for services in the field of mining by the government of Jamaica and was honored by the International Committee for Studies of Bauxite, Alumina, and Aluminum with the com committee's silver medal 
followed by the Gold Medal in 1997 for sustained work in his field. This recognized the work he did in several other countries in assisting to establish their bauxite and mineral operations like Venezuela, Brazil, Dominican Republic, Suriname, China, Guyana, and Ghana. A lifelong Roman Catholic, he applies the same level of devotion and activism to the mission of the church in Jamaica that he brought to studying and developing Jamaica's mineral resources. The nation owes Paris Leo Ayi an incalculable calculable debt for his commitment to greater understanding and sustainable development of our vital mineral resources. The CCRP takes great pleasure in presenting this, our 2021 Living Legacy Award to Mr. Paris Leo Ayi Sr. in recognition of his outstanding service to Jamaica's minerals sector. Thank you, Mrs. Reed Wall. And now Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin, our founder chair, will make the presentation of the award, followed by the citation and gift presentation by Mr. Gary Butch Hendrickson, chairman and CEO of National Baking Company. Presentation by Mrs. Kerryann Chung. Yes, Mrs. Kerryann Chung, Director of Sales and Service at Scotia Insurance. Thank you very much, Mr. Paris Leo. Please, your reply. Jean Lauritchin, CCRP team. I am deeply honoured to be receiving this honor this evening. Um, following your instructions, I, I do have a speech in my pocket, but um, I think I will not make you suffer anymore. I want to, um, to speak straight from my heart in terms of how I feel about this. When I look back on the list of honorees, when I see um, great people like Carl Hendrickson, Lester Spaulding, Oliver Clark, and the list goes on and on. I said, my God. But um, I said, don't let your head get too big. It's not really you. When you look through the list, there was nobody in that list that came from the mineral sector. So I said, it's time for the mineral sector. <laughs> so that's what it's all about. <laughs> because what you may not realize, that there are three elements that make successful civilizations and countries throughout history is water, land, and minerals. And those three things have been driving me and motivating me from high school, from my Excelsior days. And I won't go into that story because there's a story all by itself. We don't realize how much these things contribute to the development of our countries. But the problem is, and um, I got this earlier this year when I had a National Water Conference. There is a pre prior minister of um, water from Antigua. And he said, you know what? The biggest problem against development of water resources in the Caribbean, in the region, are politicians. I was one. And I recognize that. They can't see far enough ahead to be able to put the resources in to do what is needed to do. They think too short term. And also, they don't have the time to prepare the people to be able to do the job 
that is needed. Now, when I decided um, when I was at um, UE to study and specialize in bauxite, they all laughed at me and said, just red dirt, there's nothing in that, what is this? And it's close to 50 years that I've been looking at bauxite, and I still feel as if I know less rather than more. And one of the problems, though, is that throughout these 50 years, close to 50 years, I've just been having fun. <laughs> I did a lot of work here in Jamaica, not so much appreciated, but in Venezuela, in Brazil, in China. When I went to China in the late 70s, they didn't have a clue with regard to some of the stuff with bauxite. And when I go there now, I can tell you they bow to me every time in terms of ideas that you give them, what you pass on to them. When I go to Brazil, because they came, they spent time with me learning in terms of aspects of how to deal with exploration, reclamation, rehabilitation, dealing with the forestry and environment, because I'm a very early environmentalist, but a practical environmentalist. When I go to Guyana, the last time I was there, last November, I mean, I was so embarrassed because people came up to me and bought and said, this is the guru of, of bauxite. You don't get in Jamaica. I remember when I got the gold medal award in Milan, um, in Rome, for my bauxite work. I remember I gave the um, keynote address on is there enough bauxite reserves in the world to sustain the aluminum industry. And I got my medal and was walking down the aisle. And two or three persons said to me, how come you Jamaicans are always so good? And you know, um, it struck me then, but I heard that statement many other times in different forums. And this is why I'm saying, we don't realize how good we are. Because, Jean, I can't sing. If you come to church, you know I can't sing. I can't dance. I have two left feet, even though I have two new hips. And I can't run fast. But the little talent that I got from the good Lord, I honed it as much as I could to be able to deal with the job at hand. And as Peter said, you do this with the help from many others. One of the things which is why I admire about CCRP and Peter touched on it, is throughout my working days, my bosses used to criticize me and laugh at me. I said, Paris, oh, in love all people, because I always had a mixture of gray hair in my team, because they said, you can't buy experience. They've been there, they've done that, and they will help you once you solicit their help. And this is why, even right now, I think that there are so many retired, experienced people around who are sitting by forgotten and not realize that they are treasure that we should pull on. And perhaps, Gene, that's what we need to do, is to be able to get that talent pool to be able to help mentor, guide our young people, and perhaps teach the politicians what to do, because now they can't fire them. When they're at work, they feel muzzled. They're afraid that if they say some things, they're going to get fired, or they're going to be sidelined, or they're going to put somewhere else. But now, I mean, my good friend, and you know, all know him, you all know Basil Fernandez. And I remember him saying, you can't fire me now. And I am telling you what you're doing is foolishness, <laughs> right? You need more people like that, and they're there, but you need to give them the support to come out to deal with it. So bauxite has been my mainstay all these years and in all these countries, but I spent a lot of time with limestone and gypsum. That's what I help with the Carib Cement Company. Um, I'm on the board with JN, and um, they afford me. I'm still pushing the deal with water. Um, I worked at, I was at PCJ to get exploration work going because the politicians were going to put it aside because they said it takes too long and too money. They don't realize what's happening. And I feel that the work still has to go on, and the emphasis needs to be, to be there. I thank all the people that helped me along the way especially my family, but most of all my wife, 
because she's the one who give me strength, my boys, and also I want to, to thank Eugene and the CCRP for giving me this privilege. But you know what? The work goes on, and we continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Leo Yi. And we salute you as we salute all our 2021 Living Legacy awardees, which makes this a perfect little segue to bring back your young violinist extraordinaire, Giovanni Williams. He will do a special tribute of his own to Toots Hibbert. Welcome, Giovanni Williams, please.
<laughs> Thank you again, Giovanni. I would want some more of that hugging up the monkey man thing going on there. But, uh, yeah, well. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, on that scintillating note, we now take the opportunity to thank the following individuals and organization for their contribution to this event. First and foremost, our deep, deep gratitude to our Living Legacy honorees and our Special Appreciation awardees for reminding us of what nation building truly means. A heartfelt thank you to all our sponsors, Jamaica Baking Company, National Baking Company, National Commercial Bank, Jamaica National Insurance, BPM Financial, Gallagher Insurance Brokers, and Scotiabank Jamaica. They responded rather promptly to our call to enable us to cover our expenses in relation to producing this presentation this afternoon in a manner befitting our awardees and their achievements. Please, for our sponsors. Thank you to our media partner, PBCJ, for enabling the streaming of this event live via Facebook and for the repeat broadcast, which will be announced shortly. We'll have a chance to sit back and watch it from the comfort of our homes. Next, I must thank PROCOM for the ongoing sponsorship of CCRP, which includes the facilities, management, and staff for CCRP. Thank you to the CCRP Board of Directors for their tremendous support. Again, thank you, Giovanni Williams, for the sparkling performance on violin and for reminding us of the greatness of our musical hero, the late Toots Hibbert, and our other special legends in music. Thank you to Valerie Magnus. She's not here today, but the decor and setup and her helpful advice always appreciated. We would like to thank CCRP team, Michael Edwards, Yvonne Piper, Anita Chin, Sandra Laurie, and Errol Howlett, led by our executive chair, Jean Laurie Chin, for their coordinating skills in organizing the event. We wish to thank also the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel for their excellent service. Last but not least, a huge thank you to each and every one of you our wonderful guests, and of course, those who are watching out there in internet land, for your support of this event. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is only left for me to wish you all a great rest of the day, and I urge you to continue to support the CCRP's work to help our seniors live life to the fullest. And now we ask our awardees to stand by for photo opportunities, not too much mingling, you know. See, uh, Mrs. Bisset, so they're watching us. So to, yeah, making sure that we keep at arm's length. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Hello, I'm Misha Ray, client program manager, client experience at NCB. Have you previously been associated with the Living Legacy Awards? Well, this is the first time that we're sponsoring the Living Legacy Awards. Um, we're proud to have partnered with the CCRP. Previously, um, back in April, we had we had a training program where it was a three-part training program where um, members of the team were offered they, they received the training on ABM, how to use our ABM, how to use online banking, and how to protect themselves from financial fraud. How important is it to recognize the roles played by seniors in national development? Senior citizens they lay the foundation of much of what we are able to enjoy um, in Jamaica. No. So NCB will be celebrating 185 years anniversary um, shortly, and definitely a lot of this we have to we have to really commend our seniors for this. It's because of them we're successful. They have been able to safeguard their funds with us. They trust us for this. Mm -hmm. In what other ways is your organization ensuring the inclusion of or giving spe special recognition to seniors? So we do prioritize our senior citizens. We have dedicated um, a special time across our banking network for seniors. So between the hours of 8.30 and 9.30 a.m., we they, they, they are prioritized along with the physically um, disabled. What particular impact are you aiming to have with your participation in this event? By means of sponsorship, we've shown our dedication and our commitment to our seniors. Okay. I'm Grace McLean financial advisor and retirement specialist at BPM Financial Limited. 
Okay. Have you previously been associated with the Living Legacy Awards? No, I have not. And BPM is the first time that we are on board. Okay. How important is it to recognize the roles played by seniors in national development? It is very important. And because seniors are living longer. And by the year 2050, we expect about 20% of the world's population will be seniors. And also seniors have contributed significantly. And when they reach retirement, there's a deficit in the workplace. And so many of them are advisors, consultants. So they play a significant role in economic development. Okay. In what other ways is your organization ensuring the inclusion of or giving special recognition to seniors? Okay, so at BPM Financial Limited, we believe in financial literacy. We have several radio programs on financial literacy, and we also have retirement seminars for our seniors, right? And even before they get to being a senior. So from the cradle to the grave and beyond, that's what BPM is about. Being with you every stage of the life cycle, right? In terms of financial planning, creating wealth for the next generation and for you to retire, living in comfort and in peace, having peace of mind. That's what BPM Financial is about. What particular impact are you aiming to have with their participation in this event? Okay, so we want to spread financial awareness, right? That whatever stage of life you are in, you sh when you reach retirement, your money should not retire. Always have your money working for you. That's what BPM is about having your money working for you so that in retirement, you are creating income consistently, increasing your earnings. Just recently, an 81 year old member of the CCRP came and met with us. And what she wanted, she wanted to invest in stocks. She didn't know that she could. And so this is what BPM is about. We want to create continued education in retirement for the members of the CCRP and the wider society. I'm Chris Hind and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of JN General Insurance. Okay. Have you previously been associated with the Living Legacy Awards? Yes, we have. We've sponsored in the um, past and made a presentation at the award ceremony. How important is it to recognize the roles played by seniors in national development? Absolutely crucial because we, uh, we are living with the benefits of what the seniors have done for us. So we're standing on their shoulders, so we absolutely must recognize their contribution and celebrate it. In what other ways is your organization ensuring the inclusion of and giving special recognition to seniors? We have uh, put out a special product for seniors in association with CCRP, which we call JNGI Silver Shield, which enables them to protect their hard-earned assets, their homes and their motor vehicles um, with good benefits at a reasonable price. What particular impact are you aiming to have with your participation in this event? In this event, we just want to take part in celebrating um, the success and the contribution of some of the most prominent seniors in our Jamaican society, which is so important. Maureen Thomas, Managing Director, Gallagher Insurance Brokers, Jamaica Limited. Have you previously been associated with the Living Legacy Awards? Yes, this is the third year that Gallagher is a sponsor. Okay. How important is it to recognize the roles played by seniors in national development? Seniors have a lot of vision, seniors have a lot of perspective and experience, and they can help younger folks to be able to make better decisions and to guide how you know, we move forward. In what other ways is your organization ensuring the inclusion of or giving special recognition to seniors? We are the conceptualizers locally and brokers for the comprehensive health insurance plan that many seniors have been able to partake of. Over 8,000 persons are involved. Those persons, the majority of them, would not have been eligible for health insurance. And the fact that we were able to have an open period where there was no requirement for insurance eligibility or underwriting gave access to many persons. There's also house insurance and car insurance under Silver Shield, which is of great benefit to the seniors. What particular impact are you aiming to have with your participation in this event? Right, so we are hoping that as time goes on, 
members of the CCRP will see Galago as a partner and know that we are here for them and the products that we are selling and the products that we are making available to them is to their ultimate benefits. I am Butcher Hendrickson, Chairman of National Baking Company. Have you previously been associated with the Living Legacy Awards? Oh yes, I think um, a couple of years ago I was asked to do the MC job by Jean and I've known about it since its inception. It's a good award. How important is it to recognize roles played by seniors in national development? A lot more important that they recognize their role by young people. In what other ways is your organization ensuring the inclusion of or giving special recognition to seniors? Well, I couldn't even tell you how that works. I know we spend a lot of um, time and our energy on seniors. Uh, we don't encourage early retirement in our organization. Um, so we have, we have people who have been there for 40, 50 years. Very important, part of the culture. What particular impact are you aiming to have with your participation in this event? I'd like to see this whole organization grow. I think it's important. Um, it's part of, as Lean says, it's a legacy. It's a legacy of the future. And again, it is important to, to recognize seniors. Very important. They are priceless. Hello, I'm Kerry Ann Chong from Scotia Insurance. Okay. Have you previously been associated with the Living Legacy Awards? No, it's actually our first time and we are very excited to partner with the CCRP. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all the honorees who have had exemplary service. How important is it to recognize the roles played by seniors in national development? Extremely important, extremely important. And in fact, that is one of the reasons why we came on as sponsors, to really recognize and celebrate the achievements of seniors on whose shoulders we stand today. In what other ways is your organization ensuring the inclusion of or giving special recognition to seniors? Oh, we treat our seniors very special at Scotiabank. In fact, we have an account specifically for seniors, called seniors, for those 65 and over with several benefits, um, free point of sale, you know, reduced service costs or no service costs at all. You know, we've done a lot with working with the seniors to ensure that they are on online banking so they don't have to come out to come to the bank, but they can bank at their convenience. And at Scotia Insurance and Scotia Investments, we have retirement plans specifically for Jamaicans to ensure that their retirement is what they envisioned so they can really start the journey with us. What particular impact are you aiming to have with your participation in this event? No, we really just wanted for the honorees and, and other members of the CCRP to see how happy we are to celebrate with them. And again, I want to congratulate the CCRP for having this, this function and recognizing you know, the greatness that exists in our, in our seniors in Jamaica.